Aw oh, man, how are we supposed to take measurements on rotational motion now? Our video's all messed up. But that's impossible. Fans aren't supposed to bend like that when they rotate. Here, let's skip ahead a few frames and see what happens. I knew we should have asked a film student for help. We don't know anything about cameras. Why would it do that? I actually know a film student. Here, let me give him a call and see if he can come by. All right, perfect. Hey guys, how's your project going? Our video is all warped. That doesn't sound good. Mind if I take a look? Yeah, go for it. Hmm. I think I know what your problem is. Digital cameras typically use one of two sensors. One is called a CCD and the other is called a CMOS. CCD cameras use a global shutter, which means that the image you're viewing was captured and exposed all at the same time. CMOS sensors, on the other hand, use something called a rolling shutter that exposes the image one line at a time from the top to the bottom. It's kind of like the shutters in old-fashioned film cameras. Here's one with a shutter that opens all at once and then closes again. This acts like a global shutter. And here is another kind, called a focal plane shutter, where a black barrier with a slit in it actually moves across the sheet of photographic film. This one acts like a rolling shutter. Here, look at this animation explaining the effects of rolling shutter when there's only horizontal motion. When an object or the camera is moving horizontally, vertical lines or edges in the image will seem to slant or tilt. This is due to the rendering of the scene from top to bottom one line at a time. Since the object is moving in space, the camera can't capture an image at one single point in time, and this creates what's known as the rolling shutter effect. When an object is moving vertically, the rolling shutter effect can create a cartoon-like stretch when the object is falling, and a squish when the object is rising. You know those cartoons where wheels are drawn as tilted ovals to symbolize speed? That came from photographs using focal plane shutters, where the wheels really did look tilted and stretched. Since you're looking at something that's rotating, both kinds of distortion are affecting your video. Why don't you change your experiment to measure the effects of rolling shutter? Great idea. Hey guys, I wasn't too sure which camera would be the best for you guys, so I just brought all of these. This is the Nikon J1. It has a really small, compact body, but can record at a really high frame rate. So what you're saying is we can use these cameras to shoot at high frame rates, like a thousand frames per second? They don't even look that complicated. Wow, this is awesome. Thanks so much. This will help a lot. No problem. Here I have this plate set up with a piece of tape that's going to act as our vertical line, and we can move it back and forth on this track. Can you set up the camera so the piece of tape goes from the top to bottom of the frame? Yeah, sure, no problem. I'll let you know when I'm ready to start. Alright, go ahead. Done! Let's go analyze this video on the computer. If we take the distance of pixels traveled between frames for the top or bottom set of data points, and we also take the horizontal displacement between the top and bottom for each frame, then we can use measurements to figure out how many seconds it takes for the rolling shutter to take one scan. Alright, how do you want to report the results? Do you want to leave them as fractions of a frame? I've seen experiments online where the results were reported as scan time in milliseconds. It's easier to calculate the fraction of the frame, but once you have it, it's easy to convert. You just multiply it by the time it takes one frame to pass to get the scan time. Alright, that sounds good. Uh, let's put data points at the top and bottom of the vertical line for every frame. Alright, let's take these results and analyze them. This is all of the data we collected while analyzing the effect of rolling shutter on horizontal motion. From this data, we can conclude that with the equipment that would be available to a typical physics student, the rolling shutter effect is a big enough factor to create significant error when making measurements related to displacement, velocity, and acceleration. You know, physics professors seem to love measuring the acceleration due to gravity. Let's see if rolling shutter affects that measurement. Let's set up the camera so that it's really zoomed in on that little trajectory simulator I made. What are we even going to be measuring in this video? Just looking at the top of the ball and seeing if it follows where the trajectory should be? No, we'll be performing our calculations based on the center of the ball in each frame. Because when we do calculations in physics, we always use the center of mass of the object. Alright, let's make this video and see how bad rolling shutter effect actually is. Alright, look, here's one of the videos that we made with the Canon. On the way up, the ball looks squished, just like with the golf ball videos. But it's a steel ball. It can't really be that squished. It must just be the rolling shutter effect. Yeah, and look, on the way down, it's elongated. So that means that the center of the ball in the pictures has been pushed to some place where you wouldn't expect it to be? Does that make a difference in what we measure for the acceleration due to gravity? Hey man, I'm one step ahead of you. I already made this graph with quadratic fits on it. Oh yeah. When you fitted all the points, you got an acceleration of around 9.8 meters per second squared, which is what you would expect. 
Right, and look, if you only look at the right half of the data, you get a number bigger than 9.8, and if you look at only the left half, you get a number smaller. But the whole graph always gives the right answer. Not so fast. I looked at five other clips, too, and sometimes the entire graph gave a number greater than 9.8, and sometimes the entire graph gave a number less than 9.8. But that's just the old experimental error physics teachers force us to write about. It's just random stuff that doesn't matter. Okay, but could some of it be due to rolling shutter? Let's look at what we got with the JVC camera that has a CCD sensor. Look, the ball is perfectly round the whole time. And look at the graphs! 9.8 every time! The left and the right agree perfectly with the whole graph. So this is a really accurate measurement. It looks like something in the rolling shutter made the other data so scattered. Maybe it was because sometimes we were taking more data from the right and sometimes more from the left. Yeah, I didn't think the effect would be this great. I guess we can't use just any old digital cameras to help us with our physics projects. With the wrong camera, what's happening on the screen won't represent what's actually happening. Although we did only try this experiment with a small steel ball. Maybe if we used a baseball, it might work better. I see. So you mean if we had more frames to work with, the, the error in them would have to be smaller. All right, well, I don't have time to try it out right now, but we did learn a lot about cameras, and we got really good at video analysis in the process, which is pretty cool. Let's go let our physics professor know what we did. Good idea. Maybe this will help future physics students. Thank you.